Hey folks, here Rachana Ranade here, and I welcome you all to Budget 2024 video. It's going to be a really interesting video. We are going to divide this video into three parts. The first part, first part is going to be about taxation. So generally, our finance minister divides the budget into two parts. First one is about economy, and second part is about taxation. We are going to do it the reverse way. First part is going to be about taxation. That's what is going to really matter us, right? Second one is about the uh, overall economy, and the third one, which I am going to add is impact of budget 2024 on stock market so it's going to be an information packed video so keep on watching the video till the end uh, before i move on one important clarification that this is a shoot and release video so just in case if i fumble upon something please don't forget to check out the pinned comment where i will do the necessary corrections if any right so with that let's understand about the key highlights of the budget but before that let me tell you that today because of the budget we have a separate uh, you know, uh, discount which is available on our website. So, you can use the coupon code BUDGET to avail extra discount on all our stock market related courses, be it the beginners, intermediate or advanced level of courses. And uh, this discount coupon code which is BUDGET will be valid only till 12 midnight today. So, if you want to invest in knowledge, this is the right time. Okay. So, now let's move on with budget 2024 highlights. First things first. Uh, let's understand what were the expectations all around. Expectations were around rural development. They were around unemployment. I mean, uh, tackling the problems around unemployment. It, the expectations were around tackling inflation, around the boost of MSMEs, that is micro, small and medium enterprises. It was about tax relief for individuals and so many more, right? So, what, what was focused on, what was not? So, we'll just uh, uh, go through and understand one by one. So, first, let's start with the part on taxation, okay? First and foremost, uh, our finance minister, uh, Nirmala Sitaramanji, she was very clear in her speech that whatever we are going to give as a benefit, that is only going to be for the new tax regime. In short, old tax regime, they may want to fade out in the coming years is what I understand. Uh, but whatever tax lab changes were done were only for the new tax regime. Okay, So, first lab remains unchanged. For the second slab, 3 to 6 lakhs was taxed at 5%. Now, up 3 to up to 7 lakh rupees will be taxed at 5%. The second slab used to be 6 to 9. Now, the new slab is going to be from 7 to 10 up to 10 percent. 9 to 12 used to be the earlier slab. Now, 10 to 12 lakhs at 15 percent. Last two slabs remain the same. All in all, if you fall into this mid category, earning somewhere between 6 lakhs to around uh, 9, 10 lakhs, whatever this, this whole uh, category, 10 lakhs roughly. In that case, you will have a comparatively lower taxation. How much could you save up to? You could save up to 17,500 is what Nirmala Sitaramanji told in her budget speech. And uh, all in all, she said that with this, it will encourage higher disposable income for the individuals, right? Second important point which was told was about the standard deduction. If you are a salaried employee, earlier standard deduction used to be 50,000. Now, the new standard deduction is going to be 75,000. Third very important point is about the family pension for pensioners. The deduction for this used to be 15,000 rupees and that has been taken up to 25,000 rupees. So, with this, all, all these things where, you know, standard deduction increase or family pension related uh, deductions, overall, she mentioned that it could bring relief to almost 4 crore salaried individuals and pensioners. So, all in all, very good till now, three important points through which our tax outflow will be less. Number one, I talked about the new tax slabs as per the tax regime. Second, I talked about increase in standard deduction. Third, I talked about the family pension thing. Okay, all these three points will reduce our tax outflow. Don't feel very happy. Wait, points are coming up. Capital gains. Short term capital gain earlier used to be at 15%. Now it is going to be taxed at 20%. Okay, so let's assume you are investing in stock markets. You bought a, you bought a stock, let's say one month ago and you are selling it this in this month, earlier you were required to pay only 15% tax, now you will be required to pay 20% tax, okay. Talking about long term gains on all financial and non-financial assets, now it is going to attract a tax rate of 12.5% instead of earlier 10%. So, let us say you are investing in long term shares, okay, you have, you have held on to some stocks for more than one year and you sell it after one year, earlier tax lab was only, tax rate was only 10%, now it will be 12.5%, okay. But one silver lining, lining to this dark cloud is that uh, earlier you used to get an exemption of up to 1 lakh rupees for long term capital gains. So, in simple words, whatever long term capital gain you had up to 1 lakh rupees for that zero tax was the amount, but now this has been increased to 1 lakh 25,000. Okay, so again, a good point. Now comes a point for futures and options. For futures, uh, 
the STT used to be at 0.0125 percent now stands at 0.02 percent so again increased and for options it used to be 0.0625 percent for STT and now it has been increased to 0.1 percent of the option premium. So all in all be it futures, be it options, be it equity tax has been increased okay. Now let us come to some other points which is about let us say unlisted shares or some let us say unlisted financial assets I should say that and all non-financial assets example property have taken. For that so let us take an example of a house right any any individual who is to buy a house for that person to for that house to become a long term asset he or she used to have to wait for 3 years and after 3 years if the asset was sold if the house was sold then it used to be a long term capital asset okay or a, when if it would have been a gain it would have been a long term capital gain. So the holding period minimum holding period was 3 years now this holding period has been reduced to 2 years good absolutely why not in fact one more good point earlier it used to be 20 percent tax for something like a house property if it is a long term capital gain now it is going to be reduced to what 12.5 percent very happy do not be that much happy why indexation benefit now is going to go off no indexation benefit will be provided for house property uh, just before I started the shoot of this video I did receive an article wherein the finance minister has apparently given some clarification about this uh, that some grandfathering concept may apply to properties which have been bought before 2001 but just before the shoot uh, that article came in and I have not read it properly. Uh, so if some clarification comes up on that more clarifications come up on it I may do a separate YouTube short or a separate video on that but how will you get to know about it? For that you will have to subscribe to our channel hit the bell icon so that whenever I post a new video you will get notified about that right. So all in all for now indexation benefit gone is definitely not a good point okay. Next one is about tax on buyback now again one point which brings tears why earlier if I used to get any income on buyback of shares that used to be exempt in my hands as an individual but starting 1st October 2024 in the hands of the recipient any income on buyback is going to be taxed okay but at least again silver lining what is that starting from 1st October 2024 means what from April till date or till even 30th September if any buybacks do come in the stock market you participate in the buyback you get some income that income will be tax free in your hands but after that after 1st October 2024 you will have to pay tax on that okay. One very important point which is about individuals holding assets in foreign lands disclosure about that very very important point uh, just to give you an example a few of my friends uh, also staying in my society uh, for example they are uh, having an employment let us say with Microsoft or with Google okay US wala okay so they get some shares of that company as an ESOP for that they have to open a demand account there for that they also may have to open a bank account there so this is something where a disclosure was originally mandatory today also disclosure is mandatory but wait earlier the position was that assume you are holding shares worth rupees some 10,000 or whatever okay worth and if you do not give the disclosure penalty amount 10 lakhs up to 10 lakh rupees was the penalty amount. So you will be like what if you are holding even up to 10,000, 20,000 rupees and penalty will be 10 lakh yes that was the provision. Now of course it was you know not uh, I mean there, there had to be some amendment or there had to be some clarification for this and that came up in the budget wherein it was very clearly mentioned that non-reporting of such financial assets such financial assets means the point that I told you right now wherein you are holding some uh, movable assets abroad uh, out of India basically in such cases if they are valued up to 20 lakh rupees then it will not invite any penalty even if you do not give any disclosure. So in the same example if my friend is holding shares of Microsoft even up to 2 lakh rupees and if that is not disclosed in the income tax return that will not attract a penalty okay I hope this point is clear and with that the taxation part is over second part is about economy uh, till now even if you have not liked the video pause the video smash the like button and then continue with the balance part of the video. So nine priorities were discussed one was about agriculture second was about employment third one was about, was about human resource development then manufacturing and services urban development energy infra innovation and R&D and next gen reforms. Now if I were to talk about all these in details like uh, Madam Sitaraman gave a, a, a budget speech for almost one one and a half hour I will have to continue for another one one and a half hour if I have to explain all these nine points which I am not going to do obviously. So what I am going to do is just two three points out of these I will explain which may have impact on some stocks okay. So let us move on with the rural development point uh, here she mentioned that 
there is an announcement that a substantial sum of 2.66 lakh crores will be earmarked for development of rural areas which will enhance rural infrastructure. So, in short 2.6 trillion rupees have been allocated for what? For rural infrastructure. Okay. So, immediately you have to think of stocks which can be impacted because of rural infrastructure. It could be something like LNT, it could be something like KNR constructions. Second one, overall they want to improve the living conditions and economic opportunities in the rural regions. Now, if this happens, if the rural employment increases, the rural disposable income will increase and automatically FMCG stocks can have a good impact. In fact, it is said that FMCG companies get almost one third percent of their share of revenue from rural areas, more than one third in fact. So, that is why for them, if rural economy is boosted, it is definitely, definitely going to be a positive point for them. So, it could be Britannia, Nestle, something like a Hero Motor Corp, ITC, all this can have a positive impact. Okay. Talking about the last one, which is about PM Avas Yojana, again uh, an additional, uh, uh, additional uh, what can I say, 3 crore houses under PM Avas Yojana were announced, uh, both for urban as well as rural that falls under the affordable housing solutions. So, again which stocks can you think of, it could be something like uh, HDFC Bank, it could be something like Canfin Homes, it could be LIC Housing Finance, all these stocks could have a positive impact because of this, right. Moving on, next one is about gold and platinum custom duty. Now, this has been cut, gold and silver custom duty has been cut to 6 percent, platinum to 6.4 percent. Obviously, which stocks can get positive impact, be it Titan, Kalyan Dwellers, uh, Senko Gold, PC Dwellers, then Tribhuvandas Bhimji, all, all these can have a positive impact. For people like you and me, what is the impact that is more important? For us, if the custom duty is less, see majority of the times we as a country, we import gold. If custom duty is less, basic my purchasing price ideally will be less. So, ideally as individuals we can expect a drop in prices of gold as well as silver. Okay. What about mobile phones? Custom duty has been reduced for mobile phones for PCBAs, printed circuit board assemblies and chargers to 15 percent. Which stocks can it impact? Something like Dixon, Kane, Sumber, these stocks could get imp impacted. Positive or negative? Negative impact. Okay. Uh, so, this is about uh, the custom duty part and last and the most important which is impact on stock market. Now, if I were to understand the impact on stock market, we have to understand how did the market behave today. Okay. By the way, if you want to learn more about stocks, of course, as I mentioned, I do have courses, but I also have memberships wherein I discuss one stock in detail, absolute detail every single month and the stock is announced on the first of every month, the actual uh, stock is released on the fifth. This is not a stock tip or something like that. I teach how to analyze stocks from different different sectors, be it oil and gas, be it infra, be it aviation. So, there are different different ratios which you need to understand from each and every sector. So, you can consider smashing the join button on YouTube so that you can get access to these videos as well. So, going on to the final part impact on stock market. So, let us understand how did the market behave post budget in 2019. This is what the candle looked like in 2019, huge red candle. Second day what happened? Gap down and again a huge red candle. Okay, so two days back to back huge red, red candles, a kind of a recovery and after that zap, it fell down. Okay, slowly and steadily it started to go up and by November again the same level was attained. So, even though we saw a sharp correction July, August, September, October, November, within next five months markets almost hit those same levels and post that in fact it went higher. Okay. Then could we see something like a, so here there was a correction of almost 11 percent. Now, could we see a correction of 11 percent? No one can tell exactly 11 percent or not. It may not even fall half of this also. So, first we have to understand how did the candle of, I mean how, how today's candle looked like. So, for that let us check this is how it looked like. Was there a sharp fall today? Yes. Sharp fall came when futures and options ka STT, when LTCG, STCG, all points when they came in back to back market actually went into a free fall. But slowly steadily market started, market started to you know digest all these news and it actually recovered very nicely to close at this. So, this is not at all a bad candle. So, ideally if you ask me we should not see, see such a sharp correction something like 10 percent, 11 percent. But what is the underlying point? See if you are a long term investor, in that case you have to understand that any such corrections are going to be eventually recovered be it is just a matter of time, be it 2 months, 3 months, 4 months, 5 months, whatever. But what we have seen in the past, the markets have recovered. So, if you are a long term investor, ideally you should 
take these opportunities as buy on dips categories and you should in fact build your portfolio as a stronger portfolio so that you can get a positive impact in the longer term right hope i hope you have enjoyed this nice shoot and release video somewhere around 15 minutes ideally uh, but if you feel that uh, you know if you want to add something to whatever i have mentioned in today's video because i cannot of, of course tell 100% of the story uh, i try to crunch it down to 15 minutes story uh, if you feel that there are some more important points that everyone else should know please let your uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and uh, what like share subscribe that is that is for sure don't forget to check out the pinned comment as well i hope you enjoyed this one till then take care jai hind and bye bye